Sixth grade, module five, lesson 19, classwork, surface area and volume in the real world. Opening exercise, a box needs to be painted. How many square inches need to be painted to cover the entire surface of the box? Okay, so we're painting the box and so they need to paint all the different sides of the box. So for this, we're going to find surface area because we wanna know how much space, what the area is of all six sides of this rectangular prism or box. So we're gonna have, let's start with the bases. So we have two groups of 15 inches by 12 inches. And then Let's do the front and back faces. So that's 15 inches by six inches, two of those. Plus the sides are six by 12. Okay, so 15 times 12. Is 180. So this would be two groups of 180 inches squared plus 15 times six is 90. Plus six times 12 is 72, two groups of 72 inches squared. Okay, two times 180 is 360 inches squared, plus two times 90 is 180 inches squared, plus two times 72, I'm not positive, so 144 inches squared. So we just need to add all those together and we'll have the entire surface of the box. So 360 plus 180, plus 180 would be 684 inches squared. And that would be how many square inches need to be painted. A juice box is four inches tall, one inches wide, and two inch long. How much juice fits inside the juice box? So now we would just want to know how much fits inside. So we have a juice box. We want to know how much juice can fit in there. So it's four inches tall, one inch wide, two inches long. So here we're finding the volume because we want to know how much can go inside. We're not finding the surface area, how much space covers the outside. We want to know how much actual liquid can fit inside. So to find volume, we do four inches times two inches times one inch. And four times two times one is eight inches squared. So the volume is eight inches squared. Eight inches squared of juice would fit inside the box. How did you decide how to solve each problem? Well, we remember we chose surface area. Say surface area for The first one, because we wanted to know how much area there was on all of the faces. Volume for the second one because we wanted to know how much liquid would fit inside.
Okay. Now we want to do a Venn diagram comparing volume and surface area. So this should really be like a class discussion, but it's just me, so I'm going to discuss it with myself. So we have volume versus surface area. I'm going to start with their differences. So volume measures the inside of a space. I'll say measures space inside, where surface area measures the space on the outside. Okay, what else? Um, volume is measured in cubic units, right? Like inches cubed or centimeters cubed, whereas surface area is measured in um, square units. Um, let's see, so volume, it's measured the space inside and it only includes the space needed to fill inside. So let's say includes only space needed to fill inside. Whereas surface area includes all the faces. And then one more thing about surface area is you can measure that with a net. Okay, now let's think of something they have in common. Uh, well, they're both different ways to measure something. So let's just say ways to measure space and figures. Okay, example one. Now we're gonna do a bunch of examples where we're gonna have to choose between finding surface area or finding volume based on the information they've given us. So we need to make the best decision based on the information. So this is a lot of reading problem and understanding what you're reading so that then we can do the right math. So it says, Vincent puts logs in the shape of a rectangular prism outside his house. However, it is supposed to snow and Vincent wants to buy a cover so the logs stay dry. If the pile of logs creates a rectangular prism with these measurements, Okay, so they've given, told us it's a rectangular prism. I think it's way easier to visualize things if I actually draw it. So, here's my rectangular prism. It's 33 centimeters long, 12 centimeters wide, and 48 centimeters high. So obviously, it's not drawn to scale. Mine. What is the minimum amount of material needed to cover the pile of logs? So we want to cover that up. So we want to know, are we finding surface area? Are we finding volume? We want, to, we want to cover all the sides, except we don't need to cover the bottom, right? So the only thing that we're not covering is the base because it's already on the ground. So we're going to find the surface area of the other five sides of that rectangular prism. So, Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to find the surface area of the base. And remember for this, I'm only doing one base. So I'm not gonna do two. It would be, so the top base is 33 by 12. So we're gonna have 33 by 12 plus, then we'll have two front faces, two of the front, which are 33 by 48. Two of the sides, which are right here, which would be 48 by 12. All right, so let's do 33 times 12. So 
So that's 396 centimeters squared plus 33 times 48. One thousand five hundred eighty-four, but we need two of those. So I'm going to multiply that by two. So three thousand one hundred sixty-eight centimeters squared. Plus forty-eight times twelve. Five hundred seventy six, but two groups of those would be one thousand one hundred fifty two centimeters squared. So let's just add all of those together. plus the 396 Oops. It'll be 4716 centimeters squared would be how much material he would need or the minimum amount minimum amount of material needed to cover those pile of logs. Exercises. Use your knowledge of volume and surface area to answer each question. Quincy Place wants to add a pool to the neighborhood. When determining the budget, Quincy Place determined that it would be it would also be able to install a baby pool that required less than 15 cubic feet of water. Quincy Place has three different models of a baby pool to choose from. So there's three choices. Which of these choices is best for the baby pool? Why are the others not good choices? So if we're finding how much water could go into a pool, that's finding volume. We want to know how much liquid can fit inside of a contained space. So we just do length times width times height. So choice one would be five feet by five feet by one foot, which would be equal to 25 feet squared, which it needs to be less than 15 cubic feet of water. So that does not work because that's not less than 15 feet. Choice two would be four feet by three feet by one foot, and, and four times three is 12, times one is 12, so 12 feet, oh, this should be cubed, cubed. So is that less than 15? Yes, so that one would work. And let's see if choice three would be an option. Four feet by two feet by two feet. Four times two is eight, times two is 16 feet cubed. Is that less than 15 feet? No, so that is not an option either. So the only choice here is choice two. Why are the others not good choices? So choice two is the only option that holds less than 15 cubic feet of water. So it's the only water. It's the only option. Okay, number two. A packaging firm has been hired to create a box for baby blocks. The firm was hired because it could save money by creating a box using the least amount of material. The packaging firm knows that the volume of the box must be 18 centimeters cubed. 
What are the possible dimensions for the box if the volume must be exactly 18 centimeters cubed? Okay, so let's just think of some, some possible dimensions for the box. The box it has to be exactly 18. So we're looking for three things, since we're talking about volume, that add up to 18. So for example, I always think of the easiest one, one by one by 18. I always like to start there. So there's one choice. Another one, let's see. Let's try two times nine is 18. So then just multiply it by one. So there's another choice. Let's see, can we think of anything else? Um, let's try three times six is 18. So let's do three by six by then one would be 18. And then we can break six down even more into three times two. So let's do three times three, that's nine, times two is also equal to 18. So there are the three different choices for dimensions. So it's probably more ideal if you put centimeters on them. So here's, we write them more officially. So one would be one centimeter by one centimeter by 18 centimeters. Choice two would be two centimeters by nine centimeters by one centimeter. Three, three centimeters by six centimeters by one centimeter. And four, three centimeters by three centimeters by two centimeters. So there are choices. You can also, you can mix those up. Like you could have 18 by one by one, but it's the same, it's gonna be the same dimensions essentially. B, which set of dimensions should the packaging firm choose in order to use the least amount of material? Okay, so now it wants us to know how much material each one is gonna use. So we're gonna to need to find the surface area of all of these. So what we can do is use the surface area formula. And again, I like to draw it. So I think it helps me visualize it or you can follow the formula. I'll draw the first one and then use the formula for the other. So we have one by one by 18. So for the first one, we would have two groups of one by one plus two groups of, let's do the front and back faces, one by 18 plus two groups of the side faces which is also one by 18. So that would be equal to, so two groups, two times one times one would be two. And we're talking centimeters squared plus one times 18 is 18 and 18 times two is 36 plus one times 18 is 18 times two is 36 centimeters squared. And all of those would equal two plus 36 plus 36 would be 72 plus two would be 74 centimeters squared. So the surface area of one is 74 centimeters squared. So let's do two. So I'll circle that in blue. Let's do this one in blue to keep them separate. So now let's do, let's use the formula. So two, length times width plus two length times height plus two width times height. Okay, so two groups of two times nine plus two groups of two times one plus two groups of nine times one. So two times nine is 18. 18 times two is 36 centimeters squared. Two times one is two, times two is four centimeters squared. Plus nine times one is nine, times two is 18 centimeters squared. So that would add up to, let's see, four plus 36 is 40, plus 18 would give us 58 centimeters squared. So, so far, 
the least amount of material, 58, is less than 74. So, so far we're going to go with choice two. But let's keep going. So choice three, let's do the formula again. So we would have two length times width, so three times six, plus two groups of length times height, three times one, plus two groups of height times length, or width times height would be six by one. So three times six is 18, times two is 36 centimeters squared, plus three times one is three, times two is six centimeters squared, plus six times one is six, times two is 12 centimeters squared. So let's do 36 plus 18, It is 54 centimeters squared. So we have a new front runner because 54 is less than 58. So let's do the one final one. Choice four. So we have two groups of three by three plus two groups of three by two plus three groups of another three by two. So three by three is nine times two is 18 centimeters squared. Plus three times two is six times two is 12 centimeters squared plus another 12 centimeters squared. So we have 18 plus 24. We get 42 centimeters squared. So which one would use the least amount of material? That would be choice four. So we can explain it, Let's say choice four uses the least amount of material. Forty two centimeters squared. They need to use surface area. to calculate this information. All right, number three. A gift has the dimensions 50 centimeters by 35 centimeters by five centimeters. You have wrapping paper with the dimensions of 75 centimeters by 60 centimeters. Do you have enough wrapping paper to wrap the gift? Why or why not? Okay, so first let's figure out what the surface area is because if you're wrapping a gift, you want to, you're covering all six sides with wrapping paper. So we need to know if you have enough, what the area around the outside is. So let's do two groups of 50 times 35 plus two groups of 50 by 5 plus two groups of 35 times five. Again, if you think it's easier to look at it than use the formula, then draw a picture, draw a rectangular prism and use that to help you. So 50 times 35 1,750 times two will be 3,500 centimeters squared plus 50 times five, five times five is 250, or five times five is 25, so 50 times five is 250 times two, this would be 500 centimeters squared plus 35 times 5 is 175 but two groups of that is 350 so 500 plus 350 is 850 so let's just add 850 to the 3500 
4,350. So we need to cover 4,350 centimeters squared. Now that's not the end. We want to know, do we have enough? So what they have is she has 75 centimeters by 60 centimeters. So that's her flat roll. That's the area. So let's figure out, does 75 find the area of 75 by 60 and see if that's going to be enough? Oops. 6 times 5 is 30, carry the 3, 7 times 6 is 42, plus 3 is 45. So she has 4,500 centimeters squared. So we only need 4,350. She has 4,500. So it looks like she does have enough wrapping paper. Or do I? Yes, so I would have enough wrapping paper. So I do have enough wrapping paper. I need 4,350 centimeters squared, and I have 4,500 centimeters squared. Number four. Tony bought a flat rate box from the post office to send a gift to his mother for Valentine's Day. The dimensions of the medium-sized box are 14 inches by 12 inches by three and a half inches. What is the volume of the largest gift he can send to his mother? So let's find the volume of the box and that'll tell us the largest gift that he can send to his mom. Okay, so volume would be equal to 14 inches times 12 inches times three and a half inches. Let's do 14 times 12 first. One hundred sixty-eight, and then multiply it by three and a half. We have 5,880, but there was one digit behind a decimal point, so I need to move it over. So I'm just left with 588. So this is equal to, the volume is 588 inches cubed. So he has, let's say Tony has 588 inches cubed of space to fill a gift, to fill with a gift for his mom. All right, number five. A cereal company wants to chart, change the shape of its cereal box in order to attract the attention of shoppers. The original cereal box has dimensions of eight inches by three inches by 11 inches. The new box the cereal company is thinking of would have dimensions 10 inches by 10 inches by 3 inches. Which box holds more cereal? So if we're figuring out how much it can hold, that's going to be volume. So let's figure out the volume of 8 inches by 3 by 3 by 11 inches and the volume of 10 by 10 by 3. Okay, so eight times three is 24. Let's do 24 times 11. It's 264 inches cubed. So the original could hold 264. And the new is 10 by 10 is 100 times three is 300 inches cubed. So this was original and new. So which one can hold more? The new one. So the new one holds more volume. 
which box requires more material to make. So now we want to see which box holds more material. So if we had 8 by 3 by 11, let's do two groups of 8 times 3, more material to make. So we're finding surface area because we want to know how much area is on all sides of the box. So this is original. Eight times three is 24. Two groups of that would be 48 inches squared, plus eight times 11 is 88. 88 times two is 176 inches squared, and three times 11 is 33 times two would be 66 inches squared. So the original one was 290 inches squared of material to cover it. So let's see the new one. So new would be two groups of 10 by 10 plus two groups of 10 by 3 plus another group of two groups of 10 by 3. So 10 by 10 is 100, times 2 would be 200 inches squared, plus 10 times 3 is 30, times 2 is 60 inches squared, plus 30 times 2 is 60 inches squared. So 60 plus 60 is 120, plus 200 would be 320 inches squared. So between the two, 290 and 320, the new box requires more because it has a larger surface area. So the new box requires more material because 320 inches squared is larger than 290 inches squared. So it has a larger surface area. Number five, Cinema Theaters created a new popcorn box in the shape of a rectangular prism. The new popcorn box has a length of six inches, a width of three and a half, and a height of three and a half, but does not have a lid. How much material is needed to create the box? So if we're finding how much material, we're finding surface area. But something important to note is that it doesn't include a lid, so it doesn't have this top piece here. So we're just gonna be finding the other five faces. So let's do, I'll start with the bottom base so that I remember there's only one. So six by three and a half plus, let's do these two front and back pieces. Six by three, so it's another six by three and a half, but there's two of them, plus two groups of the sides are three and a half by three and a half. Okay, so six times three and a half one digit behind a decimal point, so that's 21 inches squared. So we know this is 21 inches squared because we just did it. Two groups of it would be 42 inches squared plus three and a half times three and a half. two digits behind the decimal point. So 12 and 25 hundredths, but we need two of those. I'll just add another one. Twenty-four and five tenths inches squared. So twenty-one plus forty-two.
is 63. So let's add 63 to this. We get 87 and 5 tenths inches squared as the amount of material that's needed to create the box. How much popcorn does it hold? So now we want to know how much it could hold in terms of volume. So that would be what you need to do. Volume is equal to, actually let me change colors here. Volume would be equal to three and a half inches by three and a half inches by six inches. So we already know that three and a half times three and a half, I don't want to have to redo work here, was 12 and 25 hundredths. So let's just multiply that by six. Six times two is 12, plus three is 15. Six times two is 12, plus one is 13. Six times one is six, plus one is seven. Two digits behind a decimal point, so we get 73 and 5 tenths. inches cubed of popcorn. And that is the end of the classwork.